So these are five things you may not know about the current Dodge Charger. Number one, when the Charger returned for the 2006 model year, it had actually been styled, engineered, and designed before it even had a name. The car was originally going to be called the Dodge Interceptor, which was a hat tip to versions of it that were going to be sold for police use. It wasn't until they found out that the Charger name held a very strong 70% recognition in focus groups when people in the groups were asked if they remembered the Charger and who made it. 70% of those people knew it was a Dodge. Now, you've also seen this with uh, GM, the Malibu came back. It had nothing in common with uh, the previous ones, the Chevelles and whatnot, the Impala, and as recently as the Blazer, same thing. Um, and the reason that they do it is it costs millions, if not hundreds of millions, to debut a brand new car with a brand new name and then go proceed to tell everybody about it. So when you already have that built in, it's money in the bank. And that's why the car was designed with no name, was going to be called the Interceptor, and ultimately ended up being called the Charger, even though it looked nothing like the Chargers from the 60s. Number two, contrary to popular belief, the Charger is not and never was based on an old Mercedes E-Class platform. <clears throat> the cars sort of came from the prior LH platform, which was your Dodge Intrepid, your Chrysler, Concord, LHS, 300M, etc. And those cars were actually designed to be front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, and all-wheel drive, although they only came out front-wheel drive. But if you go look under the hood of any of them, you'll see that the engine is north-south. It's not a transverse arrangement like a typical front-wheel drive car. And when they started doing the rear-wheel drive platform for the Charger and 300C and the Magnum and later the Challenger, they merged with Mercedes-Benz in this time frame. And basically what that did was open up their parts bin. So now they had a rear end they could use. They had a five-speed automatic transmission. They had an all-wheel drive system. And they had suspension components and whatnot. So that's where the confusion comes from. But it, the car is not based on an old E-Class platform. Number three. For 2011, now knowing that the car was actually a Charger, they actually gave it Charger styling. And you'll see that the door scallop and... They've tried to recreate the Coke bottle styling of the 68 to 70 Charger. Uh, in addition to this, this time period, you saw the company sold from Daimler to an investment or private equity company called Cerberus Capital Management. Those people took what was the 2011 Charger and performed a series of upgrades. They actually put more money into the car. They did more things to the interior. They changed things around and uh, prepared the car for market. Then um, the recession of 2008 hit and uh, I believe the annual sales rate back then was in 2007 was 13 million cars in the US. And that dropped to 10 million. So 3 million sales vanished. Uh, both Chrysler and GM threw up the white flag. They were bankrupt. Uh, Chrysler ended up back in the government's hands. Or not back in the government's hands, but uh, well, I guess so, because kind of they went through a bailout in 79. Fiat ended up with them. Fiat takes a look at all the cars, and they, in particular the, the Charger, did another series of upgrades to it. And one of the main ones was that the 2011 Charger was going to debut with just four square rear taillights. And Fiat actually spent the money and redid the uh, rear end, which is now known as the racetrack rear taillight that looks like the 69. So 2011, you saw uh, original styling of the Chargers from the 60s return, 68 to 70, and uh, upgrades from two different owners. Number four, and this one has to do with the Hellcat and the uh, Hellcat power rating. But uh, there's a little bit of a backstory here. So when Fiat took over the company, the CEO, Sergio Marcion, one of the first things he did is he put a brand CEO in charge of every brand. So Chrysler, 
Dodge, Jeep, and Ram each got their own kind of brand head. I wouldn't really call them CEOs because they don't have that much power, but they're held accountable for sales and whatnot. And uh, the first guy he put in charge of Dodge was Michael Akavitti. Um, and he was fired almost right away. And then they put in uh, Ralph Gilles, the uh, designer for Chrysler. He's now the VP of design for all of FCA. He oversees everything. Um, he tried his hand at running Dodge. And um, one of the things he did is it was kind of a big screw up. He changed all the names of the, of the trim levels of all the cars. If you go back and look at that era, I think that was uh, maybe 2010, 2011 of the uh, Avenger and the Dodge Journey. They're, they're not like SE and SXT and RT. They were like Main Street and Crossroad and all this stuff and just kind of really confused the dealers and whatnot. And I don't know if that was a reason why he got kicked out or not, but uh, he got the boot and we went back to being a designer, which he sh should have never left doing. And Tim Kaniskis comes in. And Tim was really good because Dodge as you know it, um, basically, he directed all of that. And one of the first things he did is he comes in and he's asking why the Challenger and uh, Charger as well, you know, weren't selling, you know, maybe in the, as good as they could or something like that. And the engineers said, you know, they're kind of heavy. They're a little bit bigger. And he says, well, on the weight problem, how do we make that go away? Like, how do we just erase this weight problem? And they said power. And that was... <laughs> when the Hellcat was born, they basically put a blower on the 6.4 and well, they um, de-stroked it a little bit. It's the same block. And uh, it was only gonna be 600 and something horsepower and then it kind of got elevated up over 700. And that's where that power rating come from. It was, they didn't just put the big motor in it to uh, compete with, you know, maybe the ZL1 or the GT500. It was really to get rid of the weight problem. Number five. So for 2015, they wanted to make the car appeal to a larger audience. So what they did in the design of the car is they tried to make it appear smaller than its 2006 to 2014 predecessors. And they did this quite simply by pulling in the four corners of the car. So you'll see in the corners, they've pulled them in and this gives the uh, appearance that the car is smaller when it's really the same size as it's always been. And this was mainly to appeal more to women. And you might be thinking, well, why would they try to make a muscle car appear to appeal better to women? Well, women are uh, an influence in sales between 70 and 80%. So whether you're buying it because your wife likes it or you're buying it to get chicks, that's a, a very important part of a car buying process and that's why uh, they made the car appear smaller for 2015. So there you have it, five things you may have not known about the Dodge Charger. Thanks for watching and take care.